here in this module we will be discussing an important vein of the upper limb which is the axillary vein so officially the axillary vein is formed at the lower border of the teres major muscle like we know about the axillary artery the termination of the axillary artery is at the lower border of the teres major muscle in the same way the commencement of the axillary vein is also at the lower border of the teres major muscle by the union of uh, the basilic vein as well as two paired brachial veins so these two paired brachial veins are the venae comitans of the brachial artery which run along the course of the brachial artery but at the lower border of the teres major muscle these two paired brachial veins drain or joins with the basilic vein to form an axillary vein officially so once the axillary vein is formed at the lower border of the teres major muscle it runs upwards along the medial side of the axillary artery and ends at the outer border of the first rib by becoming an important vein called as subclavian vein so this is what is the origin as well as the course of the axillary vein over here and let us talk about the tributaries of the axillary vein remember an important point over here that the tributaries of the axillary vein correspond to the branches of the axillary artery for example if you see the axillary vein over here which is divided into three parts by the pectoralis minor muscle like axillary artery because the axillary artery as well as axillary vein both are divided into three parts by an important muscle called as pectoralis minor muscle so the part of the artery as well as vein proximal to the muscle is the first part and the part of the artery as well as vein posterior to the muscle is the second part and the vein and artery which is distal to the muscle is the third part right so now let us talk about the tributaries of the third part of the axillary vein so the tributaries of the third part of the axillary vein are subscapular vein as well as the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral veins so three are the tributaries of the third part of the axillary vein now when we talk about the tributaries of the second part of the axillary vein it receives tributaries from the lateral thoracic vein as well as the thoracoacromial vein now let us talk about the tributaries of the first part of the axillary vein the tributary one and only tributary of the first part of the axillary vein is the cephalic vein because the cephalic vein joins with the axillary vein at the outer border of the first rib to form the subclavian vein this is the only difference where the first part of the axillary vein tributary does not correspond with the branches of the first part of the axillary artery because the first part of the axillary artery gives off a branch called as superior thoracic artery we don't have superior thoracic vein over here rather than we have the cephalic vein is the tributary which joins into or which drains into axillary vein to form subclavian vein so these are the tributaries of the axillary vein over here let us repeat once again what are the tributaries of the axillary vein the tributaries of the third part are subscapular vein anterior as well as posterior circumflex humeral veins and the tributaries for the second part are thoracoacromial vein and the lateral thoracic vein the tributary of the first part is cephalic vein to form the subclavian vein so these are the tributaries of the axillary vein over here and let us note an important point that there is no cover or there is a very thin axillary cover or axillary sheet around the axillary vein when compared to that of the artery because the vein can freely expand during increased venous return from upper limb into the subclavian vein towards the heart there's a reason there is no axillary sheet or there is a very thin axillary sheet which is wrapped around the axillary vein so this is what is about the axillary vein anatomy